All right, sort of an extension of the stoichiometry that we have looked at so far is something called a limiting reactant. It, it, it uh, turns out that often in the equation that you have, uh, you will have amounts of both reactants. Uh, for example, in this question here, I have two grams of magnesium metal. Let me just write this information in. Mass is 2.00 grams is added to 200 mils of a 0.1 molar solution of hydrochloric acid. So I have a volume here of uh, 0.200 liters and molarity is 0 0.100 molar. What volume of hydrogen gas is produced at STP? And our temperature 273.15 and our pressure 101.325 kilopascals for STP. Now, maybe you uh, oh, we don't want to know the volume. Maybe you're, you're okay with this, but when I look at the question, it's like I'm given too much stuff. Like this, where my question mark is, I know that's my ask. I know that. But then I look over here, I've got information about magnesium, and I have information about hydrochloric acid. Which one am I to use? And that's where this concept of limiting reactant, or some people call it limiting reagent, comes in. And what you have to do is you have to take a look at the two reactants that you're given and find out how many moles of each of those you have and then find out which one you have, comparatively speaking, you have less of. Um, once you've found that, then you can determine that that's your limiting reactant and use that one, forget the other one, and then do stoichiometry like you usually do. So let me show you how how uh, you can determine which is your limiting reactant. So first let's look at magnesium. I've got two grams of magnesium, so I need to find the moles. Moles is mass over uh, molar mass. The mass is 2.00 grams. Molar mass of magnesium, I believe, is 23.41 grams per mole. So, altogether, I have there 2 divided by 24.31 equals, uh-oh, I don't think I did that right, 2 divided by 24.31 equals, there we go, uh, 0 0.08227. Okay, so that's how many moles of magnesium I have. Now, if I am... Um, uh, doing this as a reaction, I would need double the moles of hydrochloric acid, right? Uh, so I would have 0 0.08227 moles of magnesium. And if I multiply it by that ratio, like we always do, one mole of magnesium is to two moles of HCl. I would times that by two, and I'll get uh, that I would need 0 0.16 four, five, four, etc. moles of HCl. Okay? So what I did there is I calculated how many moles of magnesium I have. And then if I have that, how many moles of, of HCl I would actually need. Well let's go and figure out how many moles of HCl I actually have. I'm given solution stuff there, so uh, to find moles it would be molarity is equal to moles over volume. So, moles is equal to molarity times volume. So, the molarity is 0 0.100 moles per liter. And the volume is 0 0.200 liters. So, 0 0.1 times 0 0.2 is equal to 0 0.02. Equals 0 0.02 moles. So, that's how many moles I actually have. But when I look over here, if I used up all this magnesium, I would need this many moles of hydrochloric acid. But I only have that many moles of hydrochloric acid. So I have way less hydrochloric acid than I actually need for the magnesium. So I don't have enough HCl. Therefore, HCl is the limiting reactant. Once I've determined that HCl is the limiting reactant, 
then I forget all about magnesium. Forget all, all, all about this stuff. I'm just focused on this, and I'm focused on that. So this is my asked, this is my given, and now all I have to do is do stoichiometry like I usually do. And I've given you lots of examples of, of how to do stoichiometry, so I won't actually do the stoichiometry, um, but um, uh, that's all you do now. So, so I've determined that HCl was the limiting reactant, therefore it's my given, react, uh, my given information, I need to find out the asked, do stoic like usual. Looks like it'll be a solution bill going to a gas deal. Okay, let me look, just show you one more to determine the, whether it's a limiting reactant or not, and then um, uh, you can try some questions on your own. Ammonia is produced from nitrogen and hydrogen. What's the maximum mass of ammonia that can be produced? So mass is equal to, don't know, this must be the asked side. From a mixture of 1,000 grams of, an, of, of uh, nitrogen gas, so that's a mass, and 500 grams of hydrogen. Again, as you notice, I've got, here's my asked, but here I know information about two things. So I don't know which one to use. I need to determine which one is the limiting reactant. Okay, so here we go. Let's find the moles of nitrogen. Um, and then let's calculate how many moles of hydrogen I need. And then let's actually how many, find out how many moles of hydrogen I have and just compare the two. So moles of nitrogen. Moles are equal to mass over molar mass. Uh, mass is 1,000 grams. Nitrogen is 14.01, but there's two of them. So that'll be 28.02 grams per mole. Okay, so 1,000 divided by 28.02 is 35.69, we'll call it, moles. Okay, so that's how many moles of nitrogen I have. Now, if I was reacting all of this, let's see how many moles of hydrogen I would have, or I would need. So I have 35.69 moles of nitrogen multiplied by our ratio, just like always. One mole of nitrogen reacts with three moles of hydrogen. Okay, so I'd have to take the number times by three, so that's equal to 107, roughly 107 moles of hydrogen that I would need to react with all of this nitrogen. Okay, now let's find how many, how many moles theoretically of hydrogen, or actually that I have of hydrogen. So this would be actual. This one here was a theoretical number. Okay, so moles is equal to mass over molar mass. The uh, mass is 500 grams divided by the molar mass of hydrogen is 1.01, but I have two of them. So it's 2.02 grams per mole. So 500 divided by 2.02 equals 247.52 moles. Okay, now let's do our comparison. This is how much I actually have. This is how much I need, right? Given all this nitrogen, if I was to react all that nitrogen, I'd need 107 moles of hydrogen. But I actually have 247. That's way too much, way too much. So if I have excess of this one, I would say this is the excess one. So this one, the nitrogen, is my limiting reagent. Therefore, I go up here and say nitrogen is my limiting reagent. Therefore, this is the one that I'm given. And now I can forget about this one. And away I go with stoichiometry. Okay, limiting reaction questions can be fairly tricky. It's important that you identify which is your limiting reagent, which is your excess reagent. Your limiting one, that's the one that is going to be given, and that's the one that you'll use with your stoichiometry. The excess agent, once it's identified, you don't worry about that at all. Hopefully that helps you out with your limiting reagent or limiting reaction questions.